Do -do 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 -do. Hello, people of BookTube. What the hell was that? Uh, and hello. No, I said that. And welcome to my vlog style thing of Time Hopathon. So, Time Hopathon runs from yesterday. Oops. From yesterday, which was Monday the 19th of February to Sunday the 25th of February. And I've done a TBR for it already, so I'll link to that below if you want to see that. But you could just watch this video and see what happened. So it's currently 8.45pm on uh, Tuesday the 20th of February. I didn't film anything yesterday for this because I was finishing off Hollywood by Charles Bukowski, which... Right, so annoyingly, I started reading this on the Sunday and I was like, okay, well if I get a little bit of the way in, I'll just put it down, and if I get a lot of the way in, I'll just finish it. Bang on halfway through when midnight happened. So I figured I'd finish reading Hollywood, and that took me the entirety of the first day of the readathon. So it was very good though. That's why I just was like, I'm just going to finish it. So today is Tuesday, and I've been reading the first of my books, which is John Steinbeck's John Steinbeck John Steinbeck's of Mice and Men, which I'm buddy reading with Catalyst Reads. I actually read the introductory essay first. I usually do that. I like to actually. I think it gives you a bit more context on the story, although I guess it risks spoilers. But I don't care too much about spoilers. So, uh, and actually the stuff I've remembered and jotted down from the introduction is mostly like the context of when it was written and stuff. So, so far I'm about 20 pages in and I think it's 110 pages. So I've got about 90 odd pages to go on it. Um, but to be fair, the introduction was like numbered with numerals. So none of those pages counted. And I realised that I need to finish this by 8am tomorrow morning if I'm to be on schedule. Which... Might not like it might sound a bit like much when it's quarter to nine now, but my sleep has been awful, so I've been kind of up all night. So if I'm up all night tonight, I guess I'm gonna finish reading this. And then after that, I have this, which is a book I was sent, which is A Darker State by David Young. And this is the third book in a series, and this is my my present challenge. This is my past challenge. Then I have some Asimov in my room through there, which I'll I'll go and get to after this. So we'll see. Hello. Um. You may be wondering why I'm wearing the same t-shirt as yesterday. That's because I just went to get in the shower after going for a jog as well. Lovely. And uh, no hot water. So, sponge bath for me, I guess. Anyway, it is currently 5 to 6 on Wednesday the 21st. Yeah. Um, I'm now only three days behind on my BookTube subscriptions, which is always good. I finished reading of Mice and Men. I didn't make it by my 8am goal. I made it by about 2pm today. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. There is going to be a full review of this. Let me just check because I can tell you when it's going to come. The full review. Thursday the 1st of March I'm going to be posting a video with my thoughts on this. And Catalyst Reads has also been reading at the same time. So he's going to have one on his channel as well. Um, I'm not going to say any more about that because obviously review coming soon. And I've moved on to A Dark Estate by David Young. And this is the third in a series. And uh, yeah, I'm literally, I'm 16 pages in, so I'm not far in at all. Ideally, I want to be up to about 100 by the time I fall asleep. What's annoying is the back has already started to peel. I don't want to peel it anymore, but look. Yeah, you see? And uh, the only other thing I've noted as well, right at the start in page 4 in the prologue, there's a Rat King, which is basically, uh, well, let's see. Hey, Google. What is a Rat King? According to Wikipedia, a rat king is a collection of rats whose tails are intertwined and bound together by one of several possible mechanisms, such as entangling material like hair or sticky substances like zapper gum. Did you like how smooth that transition was? That's like a pro. It was like, I've got 10 seconds here. Yeah, um, a rat king is actually going to be in meat my upcoming novel as well so it's quite cool to pick this up and see there's a rat king in it i've only seen it before i think stephen king has played with the idea but not explicitly used it and terry pratchett used it as well but this so this will be the third time really i've seen a rat king uh, apart from in my own writing so that'd be interesting i'm really looking forward to it i almost dropped a book on the cat he's just sitting down there okay so today it is it's 1.45 p.m. on Thursday, the 22nd of February. Bye, cat. So, yeah, it's 1.35 p.m. on Thursday, the 22nd of February, which basically puts us about halfway through the read-along because, yeah, noon on Thursday is the halfway point. I'm not quite halfway on my second book yet, but I have made a good dent. I seem to recall yesterday I said my goal was to hit page 100 before I went to bed, and I got to page 110. So today I want to get to about 250. If I can get to about 250 today, 
preferably even a little bit further, then that puts me on uh, the pace that I need to be on. To Basically, I need to have finished this by 4pm on Friday. So, shit, that is not long. <laughs> yeah, I have 26 hours to read 250 pages. Actually, that's not that bad, is it? That's 10 pages an hour. That's easy. We can do that. So... Although, I do have to sleep at some point. I'm going to crack on with this as much as I can today. The goal is I need to really finish this tomorrow. So I can then pick up my Isaac Asimov. Which is luckily quite a short book. But, look at the print. Look at that. That is tiny. I need to put my finger next to it for comparison. <laughs> like, my fingernail is the size of like a whole paragraph. Oh my god. So despite this only being 170 pages long, it could well be like 200,000 words. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. But I think the, the font size is the reason I put it off. So it, thanks to this, re, uh, this readathon to, for, for encouraging me. Alright, anyway, that's it now. We're going to go back to watching James Chatham. He's got some books. Look. Oh shit, hang on. And she would cheers from the sidelines of rugby matches. Though he excelled in his studies and even served as the night attendant for Pope John Paul I's brief papacy. Alright, it is... Oh, let me move backwards because I'm right next to the camera. It is 6.30pm on Friday, the 23rd of February. So, I have two days, five and a half hours left to go. However, I've finished A Dark Estate by David Young. It wasn't very good, to be honest. I'm going to give it a 3.5. It was, it was alright. Um... There was a lot of a lot of the plot in this revolved around sexuality. Like you'd have this big twist because somebody would turn out to be bisexual, and um, I mean it was so intrinsically linked to the storyline, I guess, that basically the entire storyline turned out to be about um, like homosexual people being given these injections to try and cure them of their homosexuality, and. Uh, that, that's basically it, except it takes till the end of the book to find that out, so all the way through you get all these weird bits where it's like, and so and so, was gay, dun dun dun, and then you're on the next chapter and you're like, oh, is this, is this relevant information? One other thing as well, you know I got really excited about this because there was a Rat King in it, there wasn't a fucking Rat King in it, the, the Rat King was in there for the prologue, and then at a random point two thirds of the way through, the body of the Rat King shows up, and then that acts as a clue for them. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why you go to the effort of having a Rat King? I don't know, it was just really fucking odd. I didn't like that. It struck me as though, like, he'd been writing it and he was like, we need to have some sort of clue here. So he was like, alright, this will be the clue. And then he was like, oh, but we need to mention the clue somewhere else. So he just put in this random prologue. That, like, if I were to go back through the prologue... <laughs> it just has nothing to do with the rest of the story. I'm just really confused by it. But yeah, anyway, it was it was fine. It was all right. I got through it. So now, now we have this, which is Earth is Room Enough by Isaac Asimov, and this is the one with the tiny print. All right, I'm, I'm off to do that. It's Friday night. I have my large beer, and I'm just going to sit here and read my book. I think. Today, we have got um, Melissa and Barnsey Reads. She's talking about a buddy read she just did. Cool. Alright, pause. What are we doing? Okay, we're going to do... Oh, Alright, so something happened. It is uh, 1.40pm on Saturday the 24th of February. And um, I haven't DNF'd this book. But I am having to switch it out. The print is just too tiny. Look at it. Seriously. It's it's ridiculous. Let me put... Let me try and show you something next to the print to show you how ridiculously small it is. On the, on the left we have A Dark Estate, which I just read. And on the right we have this Asimov book. Like... I, I cannot see it. Maybe... Like, right now I can see it because I'm under the lights. But I can't see it, like, I don't know if I'm trying to read by the lamp or something like that. I need to be in full-blown brightness to read this. So what I've done is I've actually ordered another copy of it. I've ordered a copy of it in hardback with the hope that the print will be bigger and I'll be able to read it. But in the meantime, I can't read it. I can't, guys. I'm sorry. So, we're switching it out. Yeah, we're switching it out. 
And instead, I'm going to read Ursula K. Le Guin, A Fisherman of the Inland Sea. Now, I don't know whether any of this is actually futuristic. So I'm, I'm three or four stories in at the moment. Actually, the second story, while I did find it very difficult to tell what the hell was going on, it did involve time travel to the extent that basically it wasn't clear when it was set. So it might not be set in the future, you know, but um, basically they have to do this time traveling thing. And because they travel 700 light years away, that puts them 700 years in the future by the time they arrive, except they have an age because they're traveling at the speed of light. But back home, 700 years have passed, if that makes sense. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least one other story in this that has some sort of future vibe. So so we're going for this. And this is beautiful. I, I got this not long ago. I got it from uh, the Cottage Bookshop. I'll link below to my little video of when we went, went book shopping there. But yeah, uh, so I am currently 60 pages in of 190. And all of the stories have got these really beautiful introductions as well. And I am. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's my first ever Ursula Le Guin. Uh, apart from that second story, which again, I kind of didn't get. It's up and down, but I suppose any story collection is. And I'm pretty confident I'm going to finish this before midnight on Sunday. So I might even, um, I don't know, try and pick up another book and film the rest of the vlog. All right, it is 10 to 3 on Sunday, the 25th of February. My calendar's up there in case you're wondering why I keep looking there. I am wearing a dressing gown just because it's cold. I haven't been up very long. That's awful, isn't it? <laughs> But I have finished reading Ursula K. Le Guin, The F a Fisherman of the Inland Sea. I don't know how I feel about this book. I'm going to have problems reviewing this, but I do want to review it. But <laughs> it just wasn't very good, to be honest. I'm really disappointed because I've heard great things about Ursula K. Le Guin as well. It was, as a physical object, it was a very beautiful book. The problem was, was that... It, it was very hard sci-fi, much harder sci-fi than I was expecting, especially after the first story, which was like not sci-fi at all almost. And then as we get along, a lot of these stories are kind of interlinked and it's just odd. They kind of focus largely on this, this method of travel that theoretically allows you to travel light years instantaneously, but obviously you then arrive there later than when you left. So you, you arrive in the future and then one person near the end managed to come back and arrive exactly where he started from. And it was just pages and pages of like bad exposition and stuff like that trying to explain how these systems worked. Even though in the introductory essay, she kind of says that she doesn't really know how they work and they break the laws of physics. So I'm like, why are you like, I don't know. And also because the setting of it was just so alien you know, you could recognise bits about our society and you could see here and there where it was like a clever commentary on our society. But for the most part, it was just off-putting because there was so much to remember and, you know, reconcile in your head and stuff. I feel like you need to read it two or three times just to understand what the fuck's going on. So, uh, it was all right. I'm going to give it three stars. Unfortunately, it's my first Ursula K. Le Guin as well. And I was like really stoked to get started. I've actually got the left hand of darkness up there now. And I don't really want to read it at the moment. So I'm going to put that off for a while. But um, yeah. It, but at least it did have that time travel element. So part of it was set in the future I guess. I don't know. There's The other part of the challenge was it could be dystopian. And you could argue that a lot of this was dystopian. But really it was just. I mean it could be set in the past. But in a parallel universe or whatever. A bit like Star Wars. That wouldn't count because it's a long time ago. In a galaxy far far away. But I don't know how well the reading has gone here. We started off very strong with Of Mice and Men. And I really enjoyed it. And then we had A Dark Estate. Which was alright. And then we had this. Which, well then we had Isaac Asimov. That I couldn't even read. <laughs> then we had this. Which was just okay. And now. As it's basically the end of the readathon. I'm just going to read some Agatha Christie. I'm going to read a Caribbean mystery because I know she won't let me down. I trust old Aggie and this is a Marple book as well. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching my Time Hopathon vlog. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you took part and if so, what books you read and what you thought of them. And in the meantime, hit subscribe for more bookish videos and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.